Hi friends and welcome to this coloring video where we will be working in the coloring book of Flowers and Sweet Girls. I have started the background already with some ink tents and um, I will be showing you how I do such a yeah, type of background. I wanted to give it a bit of an old fashioned look and um, I'm using the sepia color for this one. Of course, if you don't have the ink tense pencils, you can always use a regular colored pencil to uh, try and make the same background. Or you can use another type of watercolor medium or another watercolor pencil. Um, it's just adding a deep shadow near the um, main object or subject in this case the girl with her letter and fading out the color um, the further you are away from that main uh, object or subject so when i'm working with two water brushes one is the zich kuretake one the small and the larger one is an artiza one um, i'm trying to use the zich only for the very small details um, and the, the larger objects, uh, the larger spaces where I have to, um, yeah, dab around more or making more movements, um, I'm using the Arteza brush because I'm experiencing that the Zich brush, I really love it, but um, the the hairs of that brush are uh, quite um, vulnerable when. Uh, going around too much or in a in an too um yeah speedful way i think and so um that's why for these movements i prefer using um the, the brigger brush by arteza so here in the smaller parts it's the zig again it's a brand new one i just in uh did the plastic foil uh, away from it and this is the first picture that I'm coloring in this coloring book I ha I've had it for uh, quite a while now and so it was time to to tackle it and the paper the latest Chinese coloring books that I have purchased I've experienced a bit of trouble using water media um, the paper sucked the the ink or the the pigment too fast but this paper is is another quality you can play around longer before um, the ink is um, stuck and um, yeah that's it's really lovely and so I'm, i will not be coloring in the whole picture I'm just uh, showing you some of the areas I'm doing and then um, I'll return with another um, yeah subject that I'm tackling in this picture I, I will call it um, in this video it's all about the background and the surroundings around the girl so in next videos, it will be more um, focused on, on the girl herself. And, in, and I'm also trying to use different kind of media. So here it's the ink tents and later on we will um, work with different brands of colored pencils. Maybe I will grab some other watercolor media for uh, coloring in the clothing or do a, doing a base layer for the clothing I'm not sure yet I still have to think about some of the colors that I want to use but um, I think it will be fun to see um, that I'm working with different kind of um, of brands harder leaded pencils and softer pencils um, the whole binds will be showing or will be popping up. Um, the polychromos pencils will be popping up 
and I'm also thinking about using the Pablos here and there, maybe the Carandash Luminance. Um, it will depend on um, yeah, what I will be deciding to, uh, to create skin-wise, clothing-wise. And I'm doing a voiceover video because I don't have a lot of time to film when I'm home alone. So um, I'm just recording, coloring and uh, adding some blah blah afterwards. So I'm always putting a near an object or near a subject some darker colorings or some darker zones and then uh, fade them out. It's just wherever you want some darkness you can put it down and uh, yeah, play around with the ink or with the, the color pigment if you're using uh, watercolor paints. Maybe you can even uh, achieve this with uh, gouache if you water it down to make the lighter parts. I haven't tried it uh, yet, but I think it's possible. And when I have a bit too much of my pigment, as you can see, I dab it around in another area where it can have uh, its function. So it's not wasted. This book is by Dada Mao, I think. And there's another coloring book in the same style that I'm eyeing for. It's um, about wedding dresses. And um, some of the drawn girls remind me of some Disney figures. There's one lady and she's so uh, look, uh, she sees a re resemblance of Belle of Beauty and the Beast and wow, it's so beautiful. So I might get that book. I'm still thinking about it because I've already so many Chinese coloring books and I still have to tackle a few. So I'm very glad that I'm working in this one today. And at first I wasn't sure if I wanted to follow the, the names of the flowers that were mentioned because on the left side you have a little picture of the dress that the girl is wearing. And this one is called Hyacinth. And I've looked up the Hyacinth flower because I know, th I know them by uh, look but not by color. And Hyacinths come in different colors. So I've decided to go for a pink one. And as you can see, I've already colored in the bottom ones with a fuchsia ink tense. And I'm just scribbling around, as you can see, it's a very basic layer. And we will go over these flowers with some Holbein pencils. So a hyacinth comes in different colors. And that was very convenient because, yeah... then you can choose whatever you want for your flower. If I wanted to do blue or more of a purplish or a lilac color, that was also possible. But because it is quite poppy near the sepia, I thought fuchsia was a great color choice. And since this is a base layer, it's absolutely not a problem that some parts of the flower are a bit darker and some are a bit lighter. Um, it's just a base layer.
And I think this is a lovely way to color in a picture on camera, but not doing everything on camera. So I can color in some parts beforehand and show you what I did on yeah, the leftovers, I will call them. For the people that have the same book, do you follow the color names from uh, the flowers? Like for instance, there is a girl or there is a dress called Clover. And yeah, of course, Clover is green. So do you color in that girl with a green dress or are you running free and, and choose a yellow dress or a pink or an orange? I'm, I'm curious how you... Uh, how you decide on uh, on colors? I sometimes I feel a bit blocked um, when seeing a name, and yeah, then it's sometimes difficult to step aside for me and to decide to uh, use another color than that one. So and now we're going into another part. So here I've colored in the bottom flowers and one of the flowers above with the Holbein pencils. So I've used a strawberry color and the cherry blossom. I will be showing them right here. So the cherry blossom and the strawberry is hard to read, but it's strawberry. And this is also very simple, but it gives a lovely touch, I think. So the base layer is quite basic. And now I'm just adding some um, yeah, details into the petals. I've seen a hyacinth like that with um, a dark center and lighter areas around so i thought that would follow that kind of yeah um hyacinth um yeah hyacinth family i will call it because as i've said before there are other colors in this flower family so i've chosen the the pink one with the darker center And it's just scribbling in here and there. And of course, just like with the other colors, you can use whatever pencil brand you want. The whole binds are quite soft, but um, it's certainly uh, also doable with a harder leaded pencil. But I wanted to, to feel how they would work on this paper. So that's the first part. And now it's really nothing special. I'm just coloring in and coloring over the darker parts without any special technique, just fading out the colors. And of course, the base layer of the ink tents will also be a bit lighter and softer. But I didn't want to use the white pencil because that would make it too 
uh, light, I think. So that's why I've chosen for the cherry blossom color. So just to soften it out, but to still have a beautiful base layer of pink. And then we will we go over the uh, petals again, just a little bit with the strawberry. And that's about it. And in the next part that was uh, filmed, I will be showing how I colored in the, the leaves of the flowers. <coughs> Excuse me. At first I was thinking about painting them with some waters or with some gouache, but um, I ended up coloring in, them in with colored pencils. So, and this is how your hyacinths look after doing a base layer with ink tents and going on top with some colored pencils, or that's how I make them look. So, and now we will be going into the leaves part. And for the leaves, I have chosen to work with the polychromos pencils. And the colors are quite bright and poppy, but um, considering that the background is a sepia color and a bit old fashioned looking, I thought it was nice to have some bright colors. And for uh, these leaves, I've used three polychromos pencils, namely the pine green, leaf green and cream. I will try to focus and zoom in. I hope it's visible. Yes, you can see the leaf green is a bit hard to read, but the pine green and the cream are perfectly visible. So when I'm starting with the darkest color, and it's also a bit playing around with putting down darker parts where you want it, um, sometimes I make my darker parts quite long, sometimes I leave them shorter, but it's just how you feel like it should be. So I'm coloring in that stem first. And then we're starting at the top. Then we're going in with the leaf green. It's a very poppy and a very bright color. And I'm always fading out. I'm starting quite heavy handed. I've noticed that I'm more heavy handed on this picture. I don't know why. Um, sometimes I can really have a light hand, but now I had a, a strong hand. And I don't like coloring in with a strong hand. I prefer going in with a light hand but i don't know why i did it yeah maybe it's an under underneath tension that i was feeling i don't know but um, i'm a bit insecure filming without talking i must say but um, maybe that was why i was a bit heavy-handed i don't know but nevertheless, I like the result and um, I hope you like it too, of course.
And polychromos also work very well on this paper. And now I'm adding a bit of extra shadow on the side. To give it, yeah, extra detail. I'm noticing that my paper is quite shimmery. I didn't see that yesterday while coloring in. So I'm sorry if it's a bit clear, full. But you've seen the basic. It's not very difficult to color in these flowers or these uh, leaves. I'm sorry. And I really like the the bright and the vividness of it. I'm very happy to finally tackle this book because when I buy a book and I don't color in in it quite quickly I feel quite guilty but I know from experience that sooner or later I grab at such a book that hasn't been colored in and that everything is okay and that I did do a right thing with buying it that it wasn't a lost uh, cost I have some regrets after buying books, but not that many, luckily. So just adding some extra dark details here and there, but just not too, yeah, too bold or just in an, uh, yeah. A natural way I will call it so I'm going to say goodbye uh, for this part I'm almost at the end of my video so I really hope that you're liking how this is turning out and that you can join me in coloring in and in the next part we will be focusing on the parts of this beautiful girl I hope I will see you soon too Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.